ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستهديه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله تعالى من شرور انفسنا وسيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما ثم اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله جل وعلا وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وان شر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار اجارني الله واياكم من النار my brothers and sisters in islam it gives me great delight and joy and honor to be among you here all we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept our gathering and to forgive our sins and our shortcomings my brothers and sisters in islam we all know that death is a calamity allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not refer to anything as being a calamity directly more than death in the quran allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he said fa asabatkum musibatul maut that the death or the calamity of death strikes you the idea is we know that death is a calamity for your relatives and your friends and those around you because the family of the dead they mourn the loss of their loved one and they are grieving and they are sad and so on So it's a calamity for those around the dead person, the relatives of the dead person. But how is death a calamity for the person that has died? This is what the ayah is saying. فَأَصَابَتْكُمْ مُصِيبَةُ الْمَوْتِ The calamity of death struck you and it affected you. How is it a calamity for the person that is laying there dead? The answer is, calamity or death is considered a calamity because when the person dies an nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says idha mata ibn adam qata'a amaluhu when the son of adam dies all his good deeds come to an end this is why death is considered a calamity for the person that has died he can no longer do any righteous deeds he can no longer use his tongue to read al quran He can no longer say one subhanallah. One subhanallah earns a person a mountain the size of Uhud of Hasanat. He can no longer do this. The dead person can no longer use his feet to walk to al-masjid. And that would have earned him light on the day of judgment. That has stopped for him. The dead person can no longer use his eyes to look at that which is pleasing to Allah. to look at the Quran the dead person can no longer fast he can no longer give a charity and a sadaqa he can no longer build and enhance his relationship with Allah the dead person his record of good deeds has closed and it has come to an end this is why death is a calamity for the person who has died but this sounds depressing and there is hope and nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam teaches us about incredible hope for the believer and nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam says when the son of adam dies all his deeds come to an end except for three things there are three channels of righteous good deeds that could possibly be your source of hasanat why you'll you leave there in your grave until the day of resurrection and these three things that i want to share with you in today's khutbah 
should be the investment project of each and every single one of us sitting here. You know, often we get distracted in this world of life. Businesses, investments, every time and every century and every decade, there's something new that comes out. When the Bitcoin came out, everyone was focused on the Bitcoin. How can I make money from behind of this? When something else comes out, people are focused. Where's my next investment? Where's my next business? How can I make this money? How can I have a river of wealth coming into my account? The believer thinks at a higher degree than this. He's not only concerned with his financial situation in this worldly life, he's also concerned about his spiritual earnings in the hereafter. So now, as a believer, you're supposed to think smart and intelligent. When I die and people have long forgotten me, how can I continue a revenue of hasanat into my grave as I lay there and I have been forgotten by my family and by my friends? You need to start investing and thinking. Listen to these three matters. And these are lifelong projects. Every single day you should be working on them so that when you die, Khalas, die, sit, relax in your grave, and you have a revenue of hasanat coming into your grave. Number one, the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Sadaqatun jariya, an ongoing charity. That means you're supposed to first and foremost be working on a charity that you establish in your life now. So that when you die, and people continue to benefit from your sadaqah, from your charity project that you established, you continue to earn hasanat in your grave. Sadaqatun jariya. Imam al-Nawawi rahimahullah, he said this is al-waqf. It is an endowment that you make for yourself now before your death. You know, often today, when someone passes away, people come and they get together and they build a masjid for him, they build a well for him. That's good. But it's not as good as if you built it while you are alive. So now, have this as a project for yourself. And make it something big. Because remember, this is a huge investment for yourself. Think of building a masjid somewhere around the world. Or a well. Or an orphanage. Or a school. Yes, it's going to cost tens and thousands of dollars. Every week, set aside some money. And your intention... Oh Allah, I'm investing for my afterlife. It might take you 10 years, 15 years. Doesn't matter. Put money on the side. And this is an agreement between you and Allah that once I get the right amount of 50,000, 60,000, whatever it is, it's going to cost you to build that masjid. Then you're finally going to build it. Hoping that every person that prays in that masjid and reads Quran in there, and attends a lecture, and does i'tikaf in there, and makes wudu in there, and every rak'ah, and every sujood, all of that is in your scale of good deeds. While you're alive, and after you die. So long as people are benefiting from the good project that you established in this worldly life, this is supposed to be in your, in your projects. This is supposed to be one of your lifelong projects that you work on from now. Make it worthwhile so that when you stand on the day of judgment before Allah Azza wa Jal, you stand on it. Oh Allah Azza wa Jal, this is what I worked on in my life. I established a masjid for your sake. I established an education center for your sake. I established a medical center for your sake. What are you going to come with on the day of judgment? Wallah haq, you're going to come cheap and loose on the Day of Judgment. So there is no doubt the believer is supposed to be working on something huge that he wants to come on the Day of Judgment and present it. And that very same project you establish, your hasanat continues, doesn't matter, you died, you didn't, there are no problems. The continuous hasanat are flowing into your grief so long as people are benefiting from it. That's number one. Number two, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, this is the second channel of hasanat that flows into your grave after your death. A righteous child that makes dua for you. So you're in your grave and your righteous child says, 
O oh Allah, forgive my father. O oh Allah, bestow your mercy and your forgiveness upon my father and mother. See that one dua that your child makes for you. After your death, it goes a long way in bringing you incredible hasanat and blessings in your grief. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says that the parents are raised ranks in the paradise. They're being elevated. So they say to Allah, where is this elevation coming from? Where is it coming from? Why are we going up? Allah Azza wa Jal says, and the hadith is authentic. Because your child is making dua for you. He's asking Allah for forgiveness on your behalf. And you're going up, you're benefiting. This is a huge project to work on. Therefore, the second thing you should be working on is the righteousness of your children. This is a lifelong project. And this is both the responsibility of the mother and the father together. It's called parenting. It's not called fathering or mothering. It's called parenting because it's the responsibility of both the father and the mother to raise their children upon righteousness. So that do you know, when your child makes one dua for you after your death, Wallah, it is better than that very same child giving a million dollar sadaqah on your behalf. Because the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, a righteous child that makes dua, he did not say a righteous child that gives a sadaqah on your behalf, even though there's goodness in that, but it's not as good as a dua a righteous child makes. So now your concern is, how am I going to make my children righteous? How am I going to instill within them that they do not forget me in their dua? Therefore, you need to look after them. And the greatest concern when looking after your children is their faith and their deen and their religion and their Islam and their relationship with Allah. That is more important than taking your children to a soccer game or to a karate game or to a football game or whatever it is. That's good, no problems. But do not forget that your greatest responsibility with your children is their deen, their religion. And this is what you'll be questioned about on the Day of Judgment. Whether you taught your children al-Islam, al-Salat, al-Quran or not. And I give you something very simple. If you want your children to be saved from the evil and the corruption that is on earth, you need to teach them two things. Al-Qur'an and As-Salat. That's it. You teach him these two things, they are guarded and they are protected and they are righteous bi-ithnillah. And you would have worked on this second matter that brings you hasanat and good deeds into your grave long after you're dead. Even that's the second thing. Invest in your children. Spend money on them to teach them. Perhaps, I don't know, I'm not familiar with this area here. Is there Islamic centers? Is there Islamic education? Yeah, I don't know. But alhamdulillah, there is a lot of online platform and authentic online platforms in which you can enroll your children and they can sit behind the screen for a few hours a week and actually learn their deen, authentic deen. Spend, invest, continue to put money on your children. Teach them the Quran, teach them their deen. This is not going to go to waste. You will pass on the day of judgment your responsibility. And also, they will remember you in your dua because they're righteous. And they'll make dua for you. And that's also a river of hasanat in your grave. And finally, number three, the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, أو علم ينتفع به Or beneficial knowledge that you leave behind that people benefit from. That's also a, good, a river of good deeds that continues in your grave after you die. So that's your third project that you're supposed to be working on. How am I going to leave behind beneficial knowledge? And here, many people understand this wrong. They say, uh, look, this is not for me. I'm not the scholar. I'm not a sheikh. I'm not a person of knowledge. So this one's not for me, out for me. That's wrong. That's weak understanding. Beneficial knowledge. Everyone has something of the knowledge of Islam. 
Take that and teach it to your friends. Take that and teach it to the people on the street and the goodness of Islam. And I give you a story about an old man that lived in Saudi Arabia. An old man. He entered the masjid for Salat al-Asr one day. Listen to how he applied this hadith. And the sheikh, uh, after Salat al-Asr, he shares with the audience, with the congregation, hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So on that specific day, after al-Asr, sheikh opens the book and he reads a very famous hadith. The hadith of Abu Huraira radiallahu an, in which the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, there are two phrases that are most beloved to the most merciful. They are beloved to Allah, and they are very light on the tongue, and they are heavy in the scale. And they are subhanallah wa bihamdihi, subhanallah al-azim. This old man, this was the first time he ever heard this hadith. Never heard it before. So after the lesson finished, he approached the shaykh and he said to him, shaykh, give me a few minutes of your time and repeat this hadith for me until I memorize it. So the sheikh repeated the hadith one, two, three, five times until this old man got a good grip of it and he memorized it. This old man now, every single time he saw someone, he'd say, brother, can I just take one minute of your time? Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said there are two phrases, light on the tongue, heavy in the scale, most beloved to ar-Rahman, subhanallah, bihamdih, subhanallah, al-azim, salam alaykum. And he'd walk and he'd find someone else and he'd do the same thing and do the same thing until he got sick. And he entered the hospital and he would say this to the nurse and he would say it to the doctor before the surgery and he died and that was his state. He took one hadith and he made it a mission for himself to spread it as far and wide as he can. And every person who learned that from him, that means this person left behind beneficial knowledge. So when anyone said, Subhanallah wa bihamdih, Subhanallah al azim and it gave that person Heaviness in the scale, he got the same reward for it as well. How simple was this? Everyone can be a part of this leaving behind beneficial knowledge. Unfortunately today, many people without realizing, they leave behind them unbeneficial knowledge. And that's the world of social media today. Anyone who has an account on social media and just randomly and carelessly presses share, share, puts a comment somewhere, puts a like somewhere, it pops us up at someone else's account, sees it, something haram, something impermissible, learns something fabricated. But the, the majority of people are wasting their time leaving behind non-beneficial knowledge. Perhaps that share button, it continues to roll sayyat in your grief after your death. A person is supposed to be cautious and careful what he does on social media. Rather than this careless sharing and commenting, be smart, be wise, and say, I'm going to look for something authentic, something beneficial. One minute, two minute clip, and I want to share this. Wallah, if one person, one person benefited from it, that becomes righteous and good beneficial knowledge that you left behind. And it becomes a source of hasanat for you in the grave. Find a brother that doesn't know how to read Al-Fatiha. Teach him Surah Al-Fatiha. Then every time he recites it in his Salat, you're earning the reward of his recitation of Al-Fatiha. Make yourself useful. Go around your community. Take what you have of Islam and present it to the people. You don't know where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will place the heavy and the huge reward for you. You know, we arrived today, this morning, and I've already come across about five or six people yani from the non-Muslims, from uh, the people that are living in this part of Australia. And subhanallah, I regretted one thing, that I didn't have with me pamphlets that speak about Islam. Really nice, caring people. Someone made a comment about my dress, and he said, that's lovely, that's wonderful. I wish I had a pamphlet to give him, say, brother, here, read something about Islam. You don't know, maybe years down the track, it sparks some interest in him. And there is a website. It's called islamicpamphlets.com. Get onto that website and download these pamphlets. Have them in your car. Have them with you. Whenever you walk across someone and you see someone in the streets 
Obviously, we're not going to have the time to speak to everyone 10, 15 minutes. People don't have this time. But take out a pamphlet. Brother, this is a gift that I would like to give to you. I hope you benefit from it. If he benefits from it, and it becomes the reason for his Islam, Allahu Akbar, what kind of goodness is going to be written for you? Then imagine this person that accepts Islam becomes a reason for his family to accept Islam. And those family start giving birth to children that are upon Islam. And a generation, two, three, four generations come, they're all Muslims. It all started because of you in a pamphlet that was in your pocket. And you earn the hasanat of all of these people and all the goodness they do. Make yourself useful on earth. These are huge projects we're supposed to be working on. Sadaqa jariya, waladun salih, and ilmun yuntafa'u bihi. Don't underestimate these matters. My brothers and sisters in Islam, we ask Allah Azza wa to grant us goodness. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept from us all. أقول قول هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم الحمد لله وحده والصلاة والسلام على من لا نبي بعده وبعد هذا وصل وسلم ورحمكم الله على خير البرية وأزكى البشرية محمد بن عبد الله صاحب الحوض والشفاعة فقد أمركم الله تعالى بأمر بدأ فيه بنفسه وثنى بملائكته المسبحة بقدسه وأيها بكم أيها المؤمنون فقال عز من قائل إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد وبارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم أرنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه وأرنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم وتب علينا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكروا الله العظيم الجليل يذكركم واشكروه على نعمه يزدكم ولذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون